So this is pretty much the last wall in the house that we haven't decorated yet. We've already done wainscoting, um, we've done tile, shiplap. Uh, so this time we decided to create some art. We'll be showing you how we went from this to this. <laughs> I have the outer frame laid out for you here. I took a 1x4x8, ripped it down to 1.5 inches, then I cut two pieces that are 5 feet long and two pieces that are 3 feet long. I used a 45 degree miter, which is optional, but I do prefer this look. Next I cut the 2x3 supports to length and made sure everything was flush. I scored the drywall with the razor several times to cut it to the appropriate size. Here are the scraps I was left with, and I'll be using these to make some more projects in the future. Alright, we're getting ready to put our frame together. I have the 2x3s set up, and we went ahead and drilled some pocket holes here to put those together. And once I screw those pieces on, I'm going to get attached these trim pieces, but I'm going to leave a little gap from the bottom. That way, that's where I'm going to go ahead and attach the LED lights. I'm going to wait to screw the drywall in after I stain the frame. This is the scrap piece I'll be using as a spacer to raise the outer trim to create spacing for the light strip. Now I'm just going around and applying some wood glue and using 18 gauge brad nails to secure the trim to the 2x3 brace. After the glue dried, I applied stain and went around the trim with painter's tape. Finally, it was time to drop the drywall in place and I just used drywall screws with roughly 12 inch spacing. Now it's time to mix. You can use plaster, drywall mud, but we had leftover thin set from our flowing project, so I decided to use that. The thin set is white, but I added some black ink strictly, strictly because I wanted to practice my mixture for when we do the built-in fireplace. I wanted to see how much ink I would need before I could achieve a concrete look. So you want to start out with some cold water, then you add a powder um, gradually until you get the right mixture. Um, you can also do it by hand. I have a drill with a mixing paddle, so it was a lot faster. And they also have pre-mixed drywall, drywall mud and thin set available as well. So you can see a hint of gray here, but it's definitely not as dark as I wanted. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of, um, a little bit more black dye and then start mixing again. So that looks like the color we wanted, and so I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes, hit it again with the drill, and then we'll start applying it onto the canvas. This is definitely the fun part. I'm just applying the mixture directly onto the drywall and spreading out an even layer, making sure to get all the edges as well. You can see on the right of the screen, we have some fine and coarse notch trowels. We have some flat trowels, paintbrushes, sponges, and pointers. We've never done this, uh, so we'll be experimenting to see what various textures we can create. 
there's no right or wrong way to do this. The kids are just going around and having fun. They're using the different tools and experiencing what it feels like to work with the thin set. I really like how this float um, brought out this type of texture, so I kind of just went over everything. All right, it's a few hours later. You can see how as it dries, it dries pretty light. So we're going to come back, and after it's fully cured, we'll go ahead and start painting. Who's got the sauce? Grace got the sauce. Just a heads up, I started out with one idea, I didn't like it, so I painted over everything to redo it. Then I didn't like that, so I painted over everything again. The great thing about this is that you can easily fix and change the painting if you're not happy with it. All right, it took a few different tries. Um, painted, painted over uh, several times, and I finally got it to where we really like how this looks. Um, all I have to do now is let this completely dry. We're gonna remove the masking tape, flip this over so we can seal the back of the wood, and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach the uh, LED light strips. Um, after that, we just have to attach the U-hooks to um, hold the frame up on the wall, and then we'll go ahead and mount it on. Next step, we're going to go ahead and seal the bottom of the frame. That way we can stick the light on there. Otherwise, if you don't, um, it's not going to stick to the wood or the stain, so the string lights will end up coming right off. I'm gonna use this verithane, polyurethane. It's a triple thick. Supposedly one coat is supposed to be as good as three regular coats, so we'll give it a shot and see how it turns out. All right, so now that the bottom is sealed where the string lights are gonna go, I'm just gonna go ahead and seal the rest of the frame. Alright, so the, 
hooks came. Let's see what we have here. Got these off Amazon. These are supposedly the heavy duty hooks and they're supposed to support 40 pounds each. So I'll go ahead and take my measurements on the wall and then I'll screw it onto the back of the picture frame. All right, we're back at the wall. I went ahead and measured out where I needed to hang the um, artwork. And you can see I marked out two holes here. I marked out those holes with the little pick. Right, we're back at the wall. So I've got my screw here attached to my impact driver. It's gonna be really easy to do this with one hand because I already um, made a little divot so that the screw can slide in. And I have my Makita magnetic bit holder. So let's see here. Let's make sure I'm nice and straight. Do the same thing over here. Got these same LED light strips and that I used on my other projects. These are great, they stick really well. It's a nice, um, it's not daylight, but it's not too dim, 2700K. I think it's a like more of a bright 3000K. Okay, now a tip when you get to these corners, depending on how you're laying it, I didn't wanna put the LED strips on the side because you'd be able to see them. This way it's going to be more hidden, it's going to reflect off the, bounce off the wall and it'll look nice and clean there. But when you get to these 90 degree corners, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fold it, flip it away. So let's say you're trying to go up to the right, turn it to the left, wrap it around and you're going to have to bend there, fold that down. And boom, it's gonna look like that. Again, it's really important that you seal the wood after the stain, use the polyurethane, because if you don't, it's not gonna stick, it's just gonna keep coming off. And when you have a polyurethane barrier, it's actually, the bond is excellent. We haven't had any issues with our um, other projects with the strips coming off. All right, the length for this was pretty much perfect. We bought the 16.4 foot um, strip and the total frame on the outside, it's five foot tall by three foot wide. So it should come out to right around 16 feet. <clears throat> when you have this overhang here, all you have to do is cut where the copper pieces are. So right there, you could trim it at that line and you're all set to go.
Back, back, back. Back, back, back. back. And then open your eyes. Whoa! What do you guys see? Uh, I, I see, see a fish. fish. I see a tent, a bunny. A tent bunny. Wow. I see a heart. I see a hat, a tent, a I see a Saturday stars. All right, so it's finally done. We absolutely love how it turned out. So again, this is a three by five um, uh, painting or artwork or whatever you'd call it. It's a lot of cool texture there. And then we used just paint that we had lying around from other projects and came up with this. So yeah, um, thank you guys for watching. And if you liked the video, Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend. See you guys on the next video.